So right now, everyone and their uncle is talking about the new Apple Vision Pro mixed reality headset. But you guys know that I am and always have been a big Mac guy. So today I wanna dive in on the new Macs that were announced at the beginning of WWDC. Now, it was kind of funny to watch because Apple absolutely speed ran that whole announcement segment. They went through a 15 inch MacBook Air, the new M2 Ultra chip, the new Mac Studio, and a new Mac Pro with Apple Silicon in 15 minutes. That's, uh, that's pretty remarkable. But the reality is these are some pretty exciting products that in another world without Apple Vision Pro taking a lot of the spotlight would still be really interesting to cover. So today that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now the thing that surprised a number of people was that Apple basically made the Mac Pro just a Mac Studio with a larger chassis and some internal expansion. So I wanna go through the differences between a Mac Studio and a Mac Pro which one you should buy, the pros and cons. We'll take a look at the pricing breakdown because things are pretty interesting and pretty pricey. Let's get into it. But first, today's video is sponsored by Case Coup. The Magic Stand Case is a super innovative blend of a kickstand case and one that's MagSafe compatible. So this kickstand is a magnetic ring compatible with any MagSafe accessory or charger out there. That gives this thing unprecedented versatility. And in addition to having that dual functionality, there's a raised lip around the camera housing and the front of the phone, which protects it in the case of drops. They've got a whole bunch of different colors to complement the finish of your iPhone, and they're now accepting Klarna at checkout to make things even easier for you guys. So definitely check them out with the link in the description below. Big thanks to Case Coup for sponsoring, and now let's get into these Macs. So if you've been following the leaks and rumors in the lead up to WWDC this year, you were probably as surprised as I was to see the Mac Pro make an appearance. There have been plenty of leaks and rumors in the past like week or so even talking about an M2 Ultra Mac Studio, but the CCRP on the Mac Pro just was not there. We've known it's coming eventually, but the fact that it's coming in a week, what? But I do have some issues with the way Apple has handled this Mac Pro, and while I think it has a lot of promise, I'm definitely gonna need to get my hands on one before I can know for sure. So the pro here is that Apple's desktop finally makes some sense. At the low end, we have a $600 M2 Mac mini. For $1,300, you can get an M2 Pro, and then you can switch over to a Mac Studio where for $2,000, you can get an M2 Max, or for $4,000, you can get an M2 Ultra. This is great news because for a little while now, the desktop lineup has, has been a bit confusing. If you go back in time to 2017, 2018, you could get the Mac Mini on the low end, which had like a dual core processor, or you could get the Trash Can Mac Pro, which sucked. And then for everything else desktop, you got an iMac. Now though, the tables have turned. There's only one iMac and it's two years old, but at least the desktop finally has some life in it. But where things get complicated is when we start to customize the M2 Ultra Mac Studio. Now, for those who have enjoyed the previous Mac Studio like I have, you'll be glad to know that the pricing hasn't changed. And that means that your $4,000 is gonna get you the so-called binned GPU. This is gonna come with a 60 core GPU instead of the previous 48. Now, that is a pretty big gain in cores. Remember, the previous highest end Mac Studio went up to 64 cores. So we're only four cores behind that, and they're cores that I think are a little bit faster. If what we've seen with the M2 Pro and Max holds true, you should be getting a faster machine for $4,000 than you used to be able to get for $5,000. And of course, who's gonna say no to that? But if you do want just a little bit more, for $1,000, you can bump up to the 76 core GPU. Now, I think that's gonna end up being a bit of a steep upgrade. You're talking about 60 cores to 76. That is, there's, there's a lot of cores in both cases. So unless you really specifically need all those extra cores, or you're someone like me who wants to compare the previous high end to the current high end, this, this might be a tough sell for people. But if we go down the list here, we can now specify this Mac Studio with 192 gigabytes of unified memory. Now that's gonna run you a cool $1,600. So this is not something that I think most people are going to do. Storage pricing has stayed basically the same and that means if we spec it out with eight terabytes, we're looking at $8,800 for a fully loaded Mac Studio 
that's about the same as it was before, except it's a little bit more just because there's a higher RAM tier. Now, if we move over to the Mac Pro, what we find here is a very perplexing situation. So in its stock configuration here, this is most comparable to the Mac Studio with the binned GPU. But remember, that costs $39.99. This costs $69.99. Nice. So what do you get for your extra $3,000? Well, honestly, it doesn't seem like you get that much. We have the same 64 gigabytes of unified memory. We have the same one terabyte SSD for $7,000. Basically, what you're paying for here is that, a ton of open PCIe slots. Now, don't get me wrong, that is a very powerful tool. And I, I bought one. I bought one of these Mac Pros because I want to find out once and for all if Apple Silicon with expansion is the answer. Because you have to remember that we are sacrificing here compared to the previous Mac Pro. Not in terms of cost, not in terms of performance, almost certainly, but in terms of upgradability. This is an expandable Mac Pro, not an upgradable one. So the storage that you get, at least the built-in storage, not upgradable. The unified memory, the CPU, the GPU, it's an SOC. So you're paying for a Mac Studio in a larger box, which means you can put more stuff inside it. But there's a problem with that because you're paying $3,000 just for the luxury of having internal PCIe expansion. You could very easily make the argument that you could accomplish most of the same things with external expansion on the Mac Studio. Now, six PCI slots, that's a lot. And it's not just gonna be useful for stuff like storage. You could put in a capture card. You could put in RAID NVMe SSDs as well as traditional hard drives. Remember, these things actually have internal SATA ports, so you could absolutely load this thing up with storage. But you're paying $3,000 just for the privilege of doing that. The upgrade tree is gonna look very familiar here. It's $1,000 for those additional 16 GPU cores. It's gonna be $1,600 to bump up to 192 gigabytes of memory. And it's gonna be $2,200 to get eight terabytes. And of course, you can add wheels for 400 bucks and you can add the Magic Mouse and Magic Trackpad for 150. I'm not gonna consider that a part of the computer because that's more accessories. So our, our max price Mac Pro is $11,800. Again, $3,000 exactly more expensive than the equivalently maxed out Mac Studio. But I do think it's worth noting that the previous Intel Mac Pro maxed out at $54,000. That's a significant difference. And a lot of that is because this thing is so empty by comparison. I mean, we got, come back to this picture. That is an empty box, guys. Look at this. We have three fans blowing throughout the entire thing. If you don't put anything in those PCI slots, two of those fans are just blowing straight through an empty case. The, the entire computer is contained in the top left corner. That is an interesting approach to doing this. And honestly, it's not one that I am fully sold on. But part of the reason why the old Mac Pro was $52,000 was because you could get a terabyte and a half of memory. That thing also came with quad GPUs thanks to MPX modules. And you'll notice here on the PCB where those extra slots used to be, they're just kind of blank now. Look how much empty space is on that logic board. This is a computer that does not need to be that size. I'm skeptical, quite frankly, about this Mac Pro. Uh, I think a lot of us had been holding out hope that Apple was going to introduce an, an, a new range of Apple Silicon where you could mix and match CPUs and GPUs somehow. We, we kind of thought it was improbable, but maybe they would figure out a way to give us upgradable RAM or upgradable storage, but no. Even the storage on this thing, as far as I can tell, is not upgradable, although we can't really see in too much detail. Curiously enough, if you go through all of the photos here on Apple's website, they don't actually show the opposite side. On the previous Mac Pro, if you go to the left side, this is where you find your storage modules and your RAM, but they have not shown us what's over there. So ostensibly, 
no upgradable RAM, but maybe the storage would be a similar situation as in the Mac Studio, aka not one that you're realistically going to upgrade. So I'm very curious to know what you guys think. Did Apple phone it in with this Mac Pro? Is there any purpose in having it? Is it worth $3,000 to be able to do this expansion? I'm gonna do a video kitting out the Mac Pro to see if that expansion can really give you some added benefits. So make sure to get subscribed. I spent nearly $10,000 on this darn thing. So please, please watch the video. I beg of you. Unironically, this might be the first time that Apple has announced a new higher end Mac. And I've thought maybe I'm gonna end up returning it just cause it, it's not worth it. But I'll tell you what does seem worth it. The new MacBook Air. That's right, you didn't think that Apple would answer my literal hopes and dreams unnoticed, did you? Of course, the first thing they did was announce a 15 inch MacBook Air. And the first thing that I did was order one immediately because I have been excited for this for so long. Now, while the 13 inch did not get any update, it did get a price reduction. So from 1199, we're now starting at 1099. That I think is a pretty good deal. And this is what I told you guys would happen last year. Everyone said, oh my God, the new MacBook Air is too expensive. And I said, just wait, they'll lower it to 1099. And then a year or two later, it'll go back to 999 and everything will be right with the world. What is also very interesting is that this new 15 inch version came in at 1299. So that's only a hundred dollars more than the 13 inch used to be, or $200 more than it currently is. Why did I say that in the most confusing way possible? This is not the most exciting product in the world and specking it out is extremely similar to the 13 inch MacBook Air, with one exception. The 13 inch base model comes with a binned eight core GPU. That's not the case on the 15 inch. Even for 1299, you're getting the 10 core GPU. That is actually really nice to see. Now at 1299, you do have to be a little bit careful here because if you spec this thing out, 24 gigabytes of memory, a terabyte of storage, and you can actually give it a 70 watt USB-C power adapter if you wanna be able to do fast charging. But right now we're already at $2,100, at which point you might as well buy a 14 inch MacBook Pro because that's gonna give you extra performance, promotion, mini LED display, and additional ports. But I do think there are some advantages to a 15 inch MacBook Air. I definitely can't wait to get my hands on this thing and try it out. It's gonna be a really interesting comparison. 13 inch MacBook Air, 15 inch MacBook Air, 14 inch MacBook Pro, 16 inch MacBook Pro. That is a great lineup. Honestly, I think Apple could just totally ditch the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro and leave it as these four. So I know these new Macs were not the highlight or the main event at WWDC this year, but they are at least going to be available now instead of next year. So I'm very curious to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this. And of course, there will be reviews coming very, very soon. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.